Elementary music teacher friend, you love what you do, but you might feel unappreciated and, in fact, unseen some days. You may even feel like you're on a music teacher island and just want to connect with other music teachers who can relate to both your struggles and wins when it comes to teaching elementary music. I get you and understand completely the feelings you're having. That's why each and every week, the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast will provide you with solo and guest episodes that will help you realize you're not alone in your music teaching journey. Throughout each episode, my goal is for you to be able to walk away with actionable steps and ideas to help you feel like you're ready to take on the new week with whatever challenges may be thrown your way. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Peresta, and I'm so glad you're here. Whether you're at home, in your car, in the shower, or wherever else you're listening, grab your cup of coffee or whatever other beverage is nearby and listen in to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. Hi, I'm Adam Geis. I'm David Lurch. We're hosts of the EdTech Distilled Podcast, which is a part of the Education Podcast Network. Shows on the network are individually owned. Opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. As an elementary music teacher, maybe you're tired of feeling overwhelmed in your teaching and home life. Harmony membership is exactly where you need to be. There are many times you need support, but you don't have a music teacher mentor or you're the only elementary music teacher at your school. You have questions, but you don't want to bother anyone else because you know that they're busy. The overwhelm sets in and you begin to feel stuck. That's exactly why the Harmony community was designed. I created Harmony because of the frustrations I faced as an elementary music teacher. I had no mentor, no resources, no community, and basically had to figure it all out on my own. It's my mission to make sure other music educators don't feel isolated or struggle in your elementary music teaching journey. By becoming a mentor, you are going to get all open office hours to come and ask me any questions, accountability week every week where you can connect with an accountability group, get a mentor or be a mentor. You get lesson plan packs, entire lesson plans done for the entire school year for K to fifth grade that are editable, that have resources that you can also use to plan with and to use with your students. And there are also ways to modify the lesson plans for virtual and on a cart teaching. You also get monthly lesson planning sessions where you get to come together with other members to plan out your lessons for the next month. And you get accountability calls where you get to come and talk about any of your struggles and wins you're facing with other members that are there to give you support. You get mindset sessions with me where I'm going to talk about anything you might be facing in your work or home life. And those lesson plan packs I mentioned earlier also have a section in each and every one of them that talk about classroom management and mindset struggles that pertain to that particular month of the school year. When you join, you're going to see a start here section that guides you exactly what to do so you don't feel overwhelmed as this membership site is entering its fourth school year. Then you're going to see something called a success path. You identify where you're at and follow the action steps that will take you from feeling overwhelmed to confident. The different stages of the success path include learning, which is where you're going to focus on coping with stress. Stage two is growing, helps you with classroom management and transitions in the music room. Stage three is planning and is going to help you with simplifying lesson planning and program planning. And stage four is implementing, which is all about what do you do now and it helps you with continuing to move forward as a music teacher and also to implement technology into your lesson plans. There's so much more that you can learn inside the membership site that's going to help you move forward. Like I said, it's going into its fourth school year. So there is a whole section that's called teaching topics where you get to pick different topics based on what you need. And it will take you to different videos that have minute markers or guides or sections inside the membership to help you move forward so you don't 
not feel stuck. So if you're ready to join us, go ahead and click on that link in the show notes and you can go ahead and go to the page to read all about Harmony or just simply head to harmonymembership.teachable.com forward slash P forward slash Harmony Hub and you will be able to enroll and join us. I hope to see you in there and I cannot wait to get started. Hello, welcome back to another Bite Size PD. If you are new to me, my name is Jessica Peresta. I am the host of the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. I am also the blogger at The Domestic Musician, and you can find any of my other work at thedomesticmusician.com. Today I'm going to be talking about feeling successful this school year. And the reason I wanted to talk about this um, as one of the last Bite Size PDs, if you're not aware, I've been doing Bite Size PDs from... I think the very end of May, I've slept since then, but all summer long. So all the replays are now on my podcast, the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. This one will be on there Wednesday. Today's a uh, Bite Size PD on the set episode. And then all the ones all summer long are on my podcast, as well as the replays are on Instagram and the replays are in my Facebook group, the Elementary Music Teacher Community. So today's is, like I said, feeling successful and moving forward. So when I was thinking about this topic, I took some notes about what I want to say, like I do with everything. I'm a podcaster, it's what we do. Jessica and I have had that conversation. But to feel successful as an elementary music teacher, you need to trust in yourself and be your biggest advocate. I talked about that in some other um, professional developments, whether these bite-sized PDs or something else. Because a lot of times without getting too much into it, like I said, because I've gone into a lot more detail about it, you're not going to sometimes get the support you're looking for from the other teachers in your school building, from the parents in your building, from even your administrator a lot of times. I am um, I work with a lot of teachers who say that they feel like their administrator is just not supporting them. I, I dealt with both. I actually was hired in my position as uh, my principal was not very supportive. And then a new one came in who was like my biggest advocate. So it just totally depends. But what I'm getting at is you need to trust in yourself and be your advocate. That's not always easy. It's not just like, oh, okay, well, I'll just go in there and just keep going along even if I feel like no one's supporting me. No, but what I mean by that is... Um, when you're planning effective lessons, and sometimes you don't know if they're effective lessons till you get in there and try them. Because on paper, sometimes they look great and in front of your students, it's, you know, you just gotta try. But maybe you have the best classroom management place plan in place. You might have know your schedule. You might have it all planned out and know what classes you're getting when and what grade level's coming into your classroom and all those things. Um, you might already have assessments ready to go and have an idea, maybe not all school year, but you have an idea of how you want to assess your students, both informal and formal. You might already have been planning long-term um, lessons and short-term lesson plans, uh, short and long-term planning. That's all important. But in order to get to the point where you're ready to feel successful, you need to have confidence in yourself. That is the first step. Planning all the things going into teaching, planning when you're ready, because it is July. So maybe you're like, I haven't thought about school at all. And that's totally okay. The reason I'm providing all these PDs in the summer is so when you are ready, go back and watch or listen to the ones you need. If you're not there yet, and the reason I'm making them short and actionable is because I don't want to give you a lot to listen to. I am a talker, so sometimes I'll go longer than 10 minutes, but I want to give you bite size so you can just get it, get it in your ears, start thinking about it, planning it, go to the resources I'm mentioning and the action steps, and that's my goal. So of course, planning all the things, the lessons, thinking about classroom management, assessment, long short-term planning, all that is so important. Obviously, you know that as a teacher, right? You, You totally get that. Like, that's part of it. But a big part of what's not talked about in feeling successful is your confidence. And if you're not mentally also preparing to go back to school and you're dealing with those thoughts of, I don't feel supported, I don't feel like the teachers in my building are really they're they don't really value my job as much as i feel like they should they don't really give me that not accolades but i don't feel supported that's the word i'm looking for support i want you to brainstorm this isn't even on my list of action steps but this is a bonus bonus tip i want you to before you go back maybe you go back in two weeks three weeks four weeks some of you go back in september i don't know when you go back but before you do as you're planning the actual plans for and decorating your classroom and thinking through class lists and all those things, I want you to also think about ways that you can be your biggest advocate this school year. 
just advocate for yourself. Go in there and do your job effectively. Serve those students. Serve the heck out of them. And like, you're going to hear things. You're going to hear comments. You're going to see looks. You're going to see things on social media. And if you're seeing things on social media, like just a music teacher or, oh, that must be an easy job. I've heard it all. I have heard it all. I've seen it all. It, yeah, just mute it. Get off social media sometimes. If you're hearing and seeing those things and you're it's starting to get in here, especially before you go back to school, then don't. <laughs> it's okay. You have my permission to not get on social media sometimes. I don't like to get on social media sometimes. I love to get on and, and serve the heck out of you guys. But sometimes just in my personal life, I'm like, I don't like to. So it just maybe just think about that. All right, let's get into, I'm kind of rambling. Solution. Um, believe in yourself even if no one else does. Know that although you might have hard days or weeks, you're in the exact position, teaching position, you're supposed to be in. Maybe it doesn't feel like that some days. Maybe you're brand, you're going into a brand new school or you're a brand new teacher. So you're like, am I supposed to be here? Like, I don't know if this is where I'm supposed to be. Yes, I don't think it's a coincidence that you got the exact teaching position you have. I don't think it's a coincidence. And maybe you're feeling like it might be time to shift or move to a new school. Maybe next school year might be the year and you're kind of mentally thinking about it and you're not sure. That's okay too. It's okay to never stay put in the same place. But when you are in your position, know that you're going to have hard weeks or days. And as long as you're just kind of mentally prepared for that, and unfortunately you don't know when those are going to hit. And it could be something that, you know, um, if you're a parent, it was a train wreck at your house that morning, getting people out the door. Maybe you got all the way to school and you forgot, uh, let's say a book you needed to use to teach with that day. Maybe you, I don't know, your first class that comes in that day is just like off and you can't really identify why. You know the distractions and the interruptions that happen all the time. It's very overwhelming. So with that said, to feel successful, can do continuous self-assessment throughout the school year, as well as a self-reflection and check-in. We're constantly talking about assessing your students. That's so important, of course it is. But along with that, how many times throughout the school year are you doing self-assessment? What I mean by that is throughout the school year, I'm not gonna give you it like every week or every month, but throughout the school year, I want you to find the time to truly sit down. And if you had one of those hard weeks, just sit. I love, this is going to sound so awkward, but it is what it is. I love to sit in silence. I don't know how many of you do that. Do you ever do that? Or you, it might be when you're driving. It might be where you just like, I went outside yesterday. My kids were in here watching a movie and I just went outside. I can't be outside very long right now because it's in the hundreds. But anyways, I went outside for a minute and just sat. I didn't bring my phone. I didn't bring a book. I just sat in silence. And I guess it wasn't silent. There was mowing and you know what I mean though, without distractions. But the reason I do that is because it allows my thoughts to really be processed through. I really allow myself to process through what I'm thinking. And sometimes I notice when I do that, I'll find clarity on situations that maybe I've been stuck in or like thoughts I've been like, okay, how do I work through this or this or this? So what I'm getting at is when, when you're doing self-assessment throughout the school year, you decide what that looks like for you. Do you want to do a weekly self check in and assessing yourself? And when I say self assessment, it is okay, I had an off week. Why was it off? Journal your thoughts about that or um, assessing your teaching, assess the way classroom management's going, assess the way your balance between work and life is going, assess anything in your life that you feel like is important to help you feel successful this school year. Um, the other thing I want to say is instead of letting yourself feel overwhelmed and not knowing why, it's important to continuously stop, take a breath, and be aware of where you're at. If you never stop to think about what is causing the stress, why am I overwhelmed this week, or what is causing me to, um, you know, maybe these lessons aren't connecting with my students, or whatever it might be for you, when you stop and take a breath, you're aware of what's going on, you get the mental out and put it down on paper, then you are going to begin to notice you're feeling less overwhelmed. Okay, so a couple resources. The first one is uh, on my blog, thedomesticmusician.com, and I will include the resources after I go live on Instagram. That's when I can put them in the comment, um, in the 
yeah, description. Facebook, you already have it in the description. In podcast, it'll be in the show notes. But the Domestic Musician blog, and there is a blog post called First Day of School in Music Class. And the reason I wanted to include this one on, or you could just go to, uh, and you'll see a search bar at the top. If you put in First Day of School, you'll see that blog post pop up. But the reason I wanted to talk about this, uh, I wanted to include this blog post is because to feel successful, especially going back to school, well, you got to think about going back to school. So this one's specifically geared towards the first day of school in the music classroom. Just kind of like all these thoughts you're thinking that are everywhere. It kind of com- condenses them into one place to help you think through what you're um, going to be experiencing. You may find one tip in that blog post helpful. You may find all of them helpful. You may be like, oh, I already know all this, but it might just be a refresher. So that's why I provided it. Another resource is on my podcast, the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. I included this as a resource back in the Bite Size PD from May, but it's four ways to reframe negative thoughts about teaching. The reason I wanted to include this again as a resource is because I think it's so important. Negative thoughts will come. We talked about that already. It may come from your own thoughts. It may come from others, you know, what they're saying or implying about you. So these are ways to reframe these thoughts so you don't stay stuck in these um, thoughts and let these thoughts become real, you know, not let them fester is what I'm trying to get at. So that is, um, I guess, I oh, episode 199. I guess that would be important to include that. Action steps. Okay, so I want you, I mentioned at the beginning, is I have done bite-sized PDs all summer long. So I want you to, maybe you have you haven't been able to attend them all. That's okay, okay. But I want you to process through the things you've learned at the bite-sized PDs or any professional development you've already taken this summer. There's already some amazing ones still coming up in August. I get to be a part of those and present at them and everything. But I want you to process through what you've learned this summer and journal ways you can apply it towards your teaching situation moving forward into this school year. I know for me, it doesn't matter if I present at a professional development, you know, whether it's a summit, a conference, a workshop, or whatever, uh, a coaching week, I did that this summer, or if I attend. I know there are so many amazing sessions, so much information coming at me. It's all great, but that alone can cause overwhelm. Right. So in order to help you feel successful in moving forward into this school year, take the time to maybe you have stuff saved in a Google Drive or Google Docs or you've compiled, I don't know, your notes in a journal or whatever. However, you took notes from all these different professional development opportunities. If it was a North or Kadaya level, I know you have a binder this big. So taking the time to kind of process through what you've learned will really help you to feel successful moving forward. Now, it's not just processing through what you learn. What really helps me at professional development opportunities is I learn something, but then I think, okay, but how can I apply this towards, for you guys, towards my teaching situation? What can I use? How can I use this? When in the school year can I use this? What part of this, maybe it's a sentence someone said that I can definitely use with my students in my teaching practice. So that's what I want you to do is kind of process through what you've learned. That'll definitely help you feel successful moving forward. Um, And the second action step is when you're ready, I'm saying when you're ready, because I still realize it's July, so you may not be there and that's okay. But when you're ready, begin slowly going through the to-do list of what needs to get done before the school year and be okay. I want to say this too, because I'm very type A. (laughs) Be okay with not having everything completely ready to go. I don't know who needs to hear that, but somebody does. I know if you're anything like me, you have this to-do list a mile long of when you get in your classroom. I know some of you aren't able to get into your classrooms for a while because of, you know, sometimes mine was always used for, yes, exactly. Mine was always used for summer school, so I'd always have to wait, and then I couldn't find any of my things because I got put in 20 different classrooms, and it was, it was, oh my gosh, it was madness. But anyways, that was my first thing is get the stuff back. Second thing, um, you know, obviously, then you got to get your classroom decorated. You have, like I've been mentioning class list when you are, have those available because they do change a million times, but then you're going to start looking at those you can kind of get an idea and then your schedule and then you want to start working on lesson plans you know the to-do list you need to look at before school starts right but what I want to say is slowly go through that list and I had to let go of everything won't get done before the students walk in the first day they don't care as much as you do I mean I don't mean that rude but it's true your students aren't going to walk in and then turn around go oh my gosh that bulletin board looks a little bare. (laughs) Wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
I thought she would have a seating chart right now. Or he would have a seating chart right now. And it's not done. So I think this teacher's just not. <laughs> She's not ready for school. No! Like, so let go of some of that and say, this needs to get done pretty close to the beginning of the school year. But am I going to not be a successful teacher if it's not done by the first day? No. So here's what I want you to do on your to-do list. Put the things at the very top that need to get done, like, of course, like right away, the things that have to be done before school starts, right? Then underneath that, put like a category of things that could get done after the first day of school. You're going to notice like your stress is going to go, oh, because it will get done. It will get done. And maybe it's just you putting so much pressure on yourself to get the things done because you're an overachiever. You're in the overachievers club like I am. And so you're wanting to get it done right away. But if you're noticing that that's stressing you out, then prioritize that to-do list. Don't just make a to-do list. When I started prioritizing my list of right away, it needs to get done soonish. And this stuff can happen, but maybe in like, you know, not right away. That helps so much. The next thing is, okay, I already mentioned this, but do a weekly check-in with yourself to identify what's causing stress at home and work. It's kind of just instead of when the overwhelm starts becoming so big that you're just like, oh my gosh, like I am so beyond overwhelmed right now. I think that's, it, when it gets to that point, it's because you have not really been allowing yourself time to stop, think, process, pray, evaluate, all the things. When you let yourself do that self-check-in I talked about earlier, I think that's really when you're able to kind of identify what you need, right? What you need is going to look different than anyone else. So when you're feeling this overwhelm happen, maybe it's a conversation that needs to happen with another teacher. Maybe it's one class that you're needing to stop and say, it's overwhelming me. I don't know what's going on in here, but I'm going to stop and start processing through what needs to happen in this class this school year. So do self check-ins and self-assessments in throughout the school year. And then another, uh, the other action step, there's four this week. The other action step I want to mention is while doing self-assessment each week after your lessons you've taught about various assessments, et cetera, all those things, keep track of what's worked or hasn't worked, whether it's on a Google Doc, Google Sheet, notebook, paper, pen, I don't care. However you keep track of things, keep track of, I mean, it could just be pencil pencil in next to a lesson plan this worked well or put a put a check mark or plus sign or a and if it didn't work well just put a question mark maybe just saying go back and look at that later or jot it down it's not necessarily that the whole entire song or activity or lesson did not work it's maybe just tweaking one or two having one or two adjustments in there will really help you to know how to change it for next time that's all it is so I also want to mention that the doors to the Harmony membership, I've mentioned this, uh, they closed this Friday, July 29th, and they've been open the entire month of, July, uh, month of July. Wow. I can't wait to move forward in supporting members in a big way. We are going to have a welcome party on July 29th from, and I'm going to say the wrong time now, watch, 12 to 2 Central Time, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Central Time, but the doors close at 10 p.m. Central Time, so you have time all day to join. I want to say that it will help you tremendously in feeling successful this school year, because first of all, you're going to be surrounded by other elementary music teachers who can support and encourage you. I've mentioned before that a lot of times you're the only elementary music teacher in your school building. It can get just overwhelming for that alone. You can have your thoughts will eat you alive sometimes because you're just second guessing yourself. You don't have another elementary music teacher in your school building to go talk to you about what you're facing. So that's why this community is awesome because there's music teachers in there who can support and encourage you. You'll be given the resources and the exact action steps you need to help you move forward based on where you're at. You identify where you're at when you join the membership. There is a start here section, but then it says, okay, now choose the stage of where you are and do those action steps. Just like these bite-sized PDs, I give you action steps to follow. And then being a member is gonna help you also feel successful because you can ask me specific questions. You can ask the different members questions. We have group calls every month. There's lesson planning collaboration sessions every month. I have office hours every month where you can come pick my brain. It's just It just gives you so much support, okay? so. 
Going into this school year, I really do truly wish you nothing but the best. I really do. Supporting you means everything to me. Whether you join the Harmony membership or not, I'm here to support you however I can. I am grateful that you have come to whether it was one bite sized PD this summer or all of them or a few. I'm just grateful that you have been able to hopefully get something out of them, whether it was just one snippet, one, you know, I don't know, sentence that you can take and run with this school year. I also want to thank those of you that were able to attend the elementary music coaching week this summer. That was amazing. I had so much fun. And by the way, the replays to all of those are in the Harmony membership now. They are there to, for you to permanently watch whenever you want. Uh, on Friday, July 29th, I'll be going live on Instagram again and the Elementary Music Teacher Community Facebook group to answer any questions about Harmony. Be on the lookout this week because I will be doing some interviews with Harmony members right here on Instagram and the Facebook group. And I will be talking to them about their experience in Harmony so you can hear real member stories as well. If you are ready to join, just head to harmonymembership.teachable.com and then click on the Start Here section and you'll be able to join us there or look for the links in the descriptions and the show notes on the podcast. I hope you're having an amazing summer. Enjoy your day. Get some rest. Get some sunshine if you don't want to go in the sun like me because it's 100 degrees. I get it. But have it a great day, friends, and I will see you soon. Well, hey there. Thank you so much for listening into the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. There is an exclusive Facebook group just for listeners of this podcast and any elementary music teacher called the Elementary Music Teacher Community Facebook group. Come on over and join us there where we have conversations around the podcast episodes and encourage each other each and every week. And also head to my website, thedomesticmusician.com. I have some free resources there that you can download to help you gain traction in your classroom today as well as the blog and the membership site and all kinds of other goodies to help you keep going in your music teaching journey. I cannot wait to keep connecting with you and encouraging you and spurring you on in your journey of teaching elementary music. Hang in there, have an amazing week, and I will see you soon.